On this week's episode of The A-Game, we will take a look at some of the top plays from the 2021-2022 basketball season, the history made at the NCAA Wrestling Tournament, and we will look at the softball home opener. All this and more coming to you right now. Welcome to the A-Game. I'm your host, Noah C. Cornelius, joined alongside Allie Powell and Chris Daniels. How are you guys doing today? Doing great, thank Doing you. well. All right, starting things off, let's look at March Madness. Now, my bracket is absolutely destroyed, but I, I want to hear about you guys. How are your brackets doing? So my bracket got destroyed pretty early um, with that Gonzaga game. Um, you know, I honestly thought they were going to win it all. You know, even I'm a Duke fan, and... I did have Duke winning in one of my brackets, but I did make another bracket for Gonzaga because I had him so highly touted coming into this March Madness tournament. Of course, we saw Chet, uh, one of the biggest draftees that's going to be in the draft next season. So we saw uh, what he can bring to the table a little bit, but they sadly lost. But on a big, on a bigger scene, you know, my Duke team, uh, we came in, did um, some work in the first two rounds. Uh, we did a great job, but I love how we came in and didn't disappoint Coach K. So that's great. Yeah, uh, I think this March Madness has been anything but predictable. Um, yeah, during like the regular season, so many teams that should have won lost and, you know, vice versa. My bracket was um, not the best right from the start um, <laughs> with the uh, St. Peter's and Kentucky game. You know, uh, St. Peter's really pulled that one out. And that's, you know, Kentucky losing first round. Very rare. And then also uh, Baylor, number one seed Baylor being taken down by UNC. Um, I think that they, like, UNC was just outscoring them up 13 going into halftime. And then during the second half, UNC's Brady Manick was tossed from the game. And I think Baylor really tried to get some momentum going but uh, by scoring, you know, 51 points just in the second half. But ultimately, uh, you know, they didn't, get, they didn't make it. But. I like how you said March Madness is predictable, but if they were predictable, I'm pretty sure I would have won Will, um, Warren Buffett's billion dollars that he did a few years back. But that's <laughs> besides the point. Nah, my bracket is screwed. I, I really thought Gonzaga could do it this year, but, but like, other than 2020, and Ali was telling me about this before um, before we started filming, um, they were in the, in the finals in 2020. Other than that, they've been like elite eight choke. <laughs> Sweet 16 choke. I don't even, they might have been even out in the round of 32. I mean, they, they were playing like they had Adam Morrison on the squad, like it was 2006 or something when they choked against UCLA. Like, that's not the point. But the point is, like, Gonzaga was a disappointment, and all the number one seeds were going, and now all of our brackets are broken. But shout out to Houston and Arkansas, who won last night at the time of recording this episode. But I think the March Madness has been great to watch, but man. Our brackets are absolutely broken, y'all. So, anyways, March Madness thoughts out the window. What are our thoughts on how the baseball team has done this season? You know, we talked about it so many times that the season started. Um, can they handle the pressure on the road? And sadly, they haven't been able to do that this season. Currently, they have a 4-8 and eight away record. And, you know, when they're playing away in baseball, it's crucial that you learn how to play away because there's times that where you can do four straight games away. So if you can't handle the pressure on somebody else's field, you're not going to be able to do it away. And you're not going to be able to do it at home either. But, you know, hopefully they fix this up because of the fact that when you look at this, um, when, they, when you look at their schedule, you can see that they have so many games that they could have won. And they have games that they could have won, um, but sadly they, they let it go in the eighth inning and ninth inning and seventh inning where, you, you know, some of the hits that you make are very crucial in those innings. Yeah, absolutely. I think that... The season started off really rough for them. Um, you know, their first eight games were away against Campbell, Duke, UNCG, and South Carolina. And um, they do, unfortunately, have a losing record, 7-12. Um, and they haven't been able to win a full series yet against an opponent. So um, I think it's rough for them uh, right now. But I think that gaining momentum, getting back to their home field, you know, trying to get some some stretch of winning at home, and then maybe going back out on the road, maybe that'll give them some momentum going forward. 
Yeah, guys, I was, again, I was talking to y'all before the episode started airing. When you barely play well at home, there's no way you're going to be able to play well on the road. I mean, like, 3-3 three and three at home. That's okay, but 4-8 and eight on the road. Like, you can't play well on the road when you don't already have a base at home. I don't know if, and this isn't like an MLB franchise where you can just tear apart the thing. And be like, okay, trading this player away, trading this coach, firing this coach. Like, I don't know what it's going to take. And again, these are kids. They're, these are kids who've probably gotten scholarships to come play here to show off their skills. And I mean, sometimes your team just isn't good. It, it just isn't good. And App State is not like a top five student school in the nation. That's a given. And I, I got to give App State baseball credit. They're doing the most of what they have. But it's just not good. The product is not good. But I guess we got to take what we can get, you know? So, yeah, most recently, App State played UNCC, and they also played Georgia Southern. And I think that in their UNCC game, um, this, the final game of that series, they were able to pull out a 9-7 to win going 12 innings. And, um, and then their Georgia Southern game, I think that Georgia Southern isn't doing too bad right now. You know, they have a 14-7 and record. And they played some pretty big teams like uh, Georgia Tech and University of Georgia, and they sec were able to secure wins against both of those teams. So I think App State being able to pull off a win against them um, in the final game of that series, um, I think that that just says something about App State. Um, so, yeah, what do y'all think? I just think that this um, series that you talked about, um, but the series I want to focus on is a Georgia Southern, Southern series because you can see that they lost back-to-back -back two games, but they learned their lesson and they won their game versus um, in 11 and 6 fashion. So, like you said, they have the ability to win these games, but it's just coming down to mentality. And I think that's what it comes down to a lot in this sport because you have to be focused. Um, you know, when they're at bat, we've seen some of the uh, really good players on this team um, be able to score and be able to do what they do in their position, as such as catcher, um, first base, second base, third base. But like we said, um, just has, it's just a mentality game at this point. Yeah, and I'm looking at the roster here because I'm trying to take into account like the ages of the players we have on our right. team. Freshman, junior, 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 sophomore, freshman, graduate student, freshman, sophomore, so like these are young, these are young players, and even more so because this is college. And and, and let me backtrack what I said earlier. I was a little tough. I was like, man, you know, we can't just fire players and trade them and fire coaches. Like, it, unfortunately, these are young kids, and the best we can do is just you know, work with them and, and cultivate their skills. So I think if we keep riding with these kids, maybe we'll get better in the future. But as for right now, subpar, and we're just going to have to run with it. All right, well, we have to go to a break, but stay with us because we will have more from Allie and Chris about their thoughts on the softball season thus far. Do you like video game news and entertainment? Well, App TV's original gaming news channel, Pixel Peak, is back for our eighth season. Every other week, we discuss news stories, give a game review, display gameplay, and more. Be sure to check out our new season bi-weekly on Thursdays at 3 on WatchAppTV.com, SkyBest Channel 20 and 1020, Spectrum Channel 198, or on App State's Campus Television Channel 23.3. Thanks for stopping by, and we hope to see you next time on Pixel Peak. Broadcasting from the Wayne L. Sumner studio in the George G. Beasley Media Complex. Still crazy after all these years. 90.5 WASU, the app FM. Welcome back to a brand new season of the morning app every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Check it out on 90.5 WASU FM, WASU Radio.com, WatchAppTV.com, WatchAppTV on Facebook and YouTube, SkyBest Channels 20 and 1020, Charter Channel 198, and Campus Channel 23.3. See you there. Connected Cultures is back for spring 2022. We'll be talking to you about Mexico, South Africa, the Netherlands, and so much more. You can watch us every Friday at 10 a.m either online at WatchAppTV.com or on campus on channel 23.3. Bye. Bye. Hi, Hi neighbor. neighbor. I'm Ryan Perone. And I'm Elena Jones. Join us every Tuesday at 10 a.m. as we explore the events, organizations, and people that make the high country so special. You can tune in on channel 198 for Spectrum customers, channel 20 or 1020 for SkyBest customers, or channel 23-3 on campus. Also, make sure to follow us at Instagram at hi underscore neighbor app TV for up-to-date coverage of events happening and student-made content. Until then, bye, bye neighbor. neighbor.
It's time for Sports Wrap on 90.5 WASU-FM. Unpredictable. NC State can be on a That is true. I feel like they do have one of these games uh, in this part of the season every year. I'm not going to get into a big discussion about expanding it. I definitely think it should be maybe capped at eight teams, maybe six. six, 228 yards on the ground as compared to a total of 55 for Coastal Carolina. I count one team on the, on, of the six games that they have played this year that was in the playoffs last year. Guys, we need to film a promo. Does anyone have any ideas? Jack Black gave me a magic sack with a photograph from that song by Nickelback. Give it up. Okay, I got one, guys. What do you call a snail on a ship? I hope you explode. Tell the camera when the show is. Up late App State on App TV at 9 p.m. every Sunday or so. They'll take me like they took Abe if you don't watch. Ah, memories. A sweet retrospective look at the past. However, the past has, well, passed. And now, a new and better crew looks toward the horizon and marches toward Appalachian State head on. This spring, look toward App Avenue on App TV to see a new legacy be written on random days of the week. No, seriously, this show will literally be airing any day of the week, so stay glued to those screens. We'll see you out there. Appalachian Avenue! Welcome back to the A-Game. I'm Noah C. Cornelius. So we were talking about baseball earlier, but we got to talk about some standouts because even though our record is not that great, there have been some standouts. Who do you think they are? Uh, I definitely think that Jason Kornatzer and Trey Tuich definitely carry on the mound for the Mountaineers. Um, I think that right-handed pitcher Trey Tuich, he struck out nine batters over six innings, and that was a career high for him um, during their Georgia Southern game. And uh, Jason Kornatzer is usually the starter pitcher for the Mountaineers, and then Trey Tuich always co- usually comes in right after um, for relief. And I think at bat, uh, Luke Drumheller seems to be doing a lot uh, in terms of getting runs in. Um, in the UNC game, Luke Drumheller uh, led off uh, the eighth inning with a home run. And they weren't able to secure that win, but I think he was really trying his best for the team to get some momentum started for them. Yeah, I really love um, Hayden Cross's game because I honestly think that even though we talked about how the team hasn't been able to work together as a unit, he's been, he's been able to do his own thing as a catcher. You know, he has um, 66 at-bats at bets at currently. He has 10 runs, um, 23 hits. So he's been able to do what he's been able to do um, as his position allows him to as a catcher. And I just feel like, um, you know, his OPS is .928. It's one of the best OPSs as a catcher. And honestly, when you even look at the baseball, Major League Baseball records, .08 is above average for hitters. So he's um, in that um, threshold. So it's great to see. I love his game. But as we said, as a unit, they're not doing it great together. But as you know, in the individual players, they're doing a fantastic job. Yeah, you know, just, I'm just glancing at these stats real quick. I want to talk about Dylan Rogers. Um, Dylan Rogers has 77 at bats, nine runs, and 23 hits. I'm, I'm I'm just going straight off of statistics. Unfortunately, I'm a busy college student. I have not been able to go out to a game, but that will change. But from looking at the stats, Dylan Rogers putting a pretty solid season together so far. I want to see I want to see him continue on this run again. 77 at bats, nine runs, 23 hits. I think if he keeps that going and helps his teammates out, because he is an outfielder, you know, he keeps doing his thing in the outfield. I think. I think um, he'll have a pretty solid season by the end of this year. Yeah, I think it's really great that we touched on, like, every position out there and really focused on the strengths of each player individually. I'm very excited to see what the rest of the season will hold. Absolutely. Now going to the sister stick and ball sport, (laughs) we're going to be talking about softball. How is the softball season going so far, guys? Softball season is doing great right now. 15 and 11, it's not one of the best records, but they're doing a great job. Um, three and three in the conference. Uh, you know, I feel like they should be um, zero. I feel like they should be six and zero in that conference record. The way <laughs> that they play, they're doing a really good job. Um, I'm also really impressed with their four-game win streak between um, UMass and Ohio. Um, you know, they defeated them in domination style in every single game. Um, they didn't face them exactly. You know, one by one, they fought UMass first and then Ohio twice and then UMass. But they did a great job, um, and I really like the way that they're playing this season so far. It's it's great, and you know they're doing, they're doing a lot better than last season, and I feel like they have the, the momentum to become better. 
Yeah, absolutely. I think that they've played a lot of games so far. You know, they played a lot of tournaments, um, and they've only been able to play two Sun Belt Conference series so far. Um, they went two and one against Texas State and one and two against Georgia State, and both of the series were not at home um, in Boone. And um, you know, their record, like you said, 15 and 11, so a winning record. Um, their next games uh, are it's against Sun Belt uh, Conference uh, opponent ULM. And they are away, and then when they get back, they're turning right back around and going to Chapel Hill to play UNC. So I definitely think that uh, they have a lot of potential to win to win these games. Yeah, no, the softball team again. Just looking at these stats here, crazy. You know, they played Georgia State in a doubleheader, and they won 11 to zero in five innings. Now they did go on to lose two to six in the next game, and then five to eight in the next game. But the 11 to zero win shows the firepower that this mm -hmm. team has. 11 to zero is nothing to bat an eye about. Early on in the season, they played in um, the Presbyterian tournament, in which they won 13 to zero in five innings, which is crazy against North Carolina Central. Not not the strongest team, but they it's still it's 13 to zero. It's 13 to zero, and like Ali, you talked about. They're playing ULM on the road at the time of this recording, and then they'll go to North Carolina at the time of this recording. <laughs> but, I mean, after that, the record is all Sun Belt. So, so, we got a pretty solid squad. 15-11, once again, you know, we, we'd like to see better, but they do have a 3-3 three three conference record and a 1-1 one one home record. 10-3 neutral, though, so maybe there's hope for this team. So, lastly, who are the standouts for the softball team? So, my standout right now is Kate Houston, and... Honestly, if you look, just look at these stats on paper, these are absolutely incredible. Like I talked about with the men's team, um, OPS of 800 and better is fantastic. It's, it's one of the best um, hitting averages in any sport, um, in baseball, major league or college. But she has a 1.001 um, OPS, which is absolutely incredible. Every time she goes to the bat, she's able to hit it, be able to get runs for the other teammates, and be able to get home, front, home runs inside of the plate. She has three home runs this season, 35 hits, 18 runs, and 91 at-bats. So she's doing a great job this season, and I really love the way that she's playing this season. Yeah, some of my standouts are outfielder Emily Parrott. She's been having a great season so far, and she's done a lot for the team scoring-wise. Um, she scored three times during the team's most recent doubleheader against Western Carolina, and she also had a home run in the Georgia State game, um, which they won 11-0. And pitcher Taylor Nichols, she's had a, she had a great game against Texas State, which is a tough opponent for App State uh, in conference. And she really went the distance um, in App State's second uh, ever victory against Texas State. Um, so yeah, I really love both of them. Also catcher Bailey Morton, uh, she's contributed a lot to the team's success. She's a really great power hitter and gotten a lot of runs for the team as well. I gotta go with sophomore infield Emma Jones. Emma Jones has 88 at-bats, 22 runs and 20 hits. Uh, she has a .227 batting average. Not the greatest on the team in terms of who has the highest, because you said Kate Houston has .385, mm -hmm. which is amazing. But Emma Jones is like the glue player. The stats show it, they back it up, and you can see it in the schedule. She's definitely contributed in a multitude of games that she has played in, and she's also played in 26 games and started 26. Emma Jones is definitely a player that I have been looking out for. All right, so stay with us because after the break, we are going to take a look back at some of the top plays from the basketball season, and later, we will take a look at the softball home opener. This spring, look toward App Avenue on App TV to see a new legacy be written on random days of the week. No, seriously, this show will literally be airing any day of the week, so stay glued to those screens. We'll see you out there. Boy, oh boy, what to watch on a Sunday night? What are you doing tonight at 9 p.m.? On a Sunday. I've already rejected you like five times. Shut up. Oh, I'm so bored. I have nothing to do tonight this Sunday night at 9 p.m. tonight on Sunday night. What are you doing tonight at 9? Oh, I already rejected you five times. Shut up. We know what to do tonight at 9. Have you been there the whole time? We're, We're not here. Does anyone else see them? See who? What are you talking about?
Oh my god, we could totally watch Up Late App State on Sunday nights at 9 p.m. on tonight's Sunday night at 9 p.m. tonight's on Sunday. Oh my god, how darn tootin'. Welcome back to a brand new smack dab season of App TV's own queer oriented show, Can't Think Straight. I'm Nate. And I'm Harriet. We'll be here to make you laugh and think as we combine comedy and education on Can't Think Straight. The show premieres Fridays at 9 p.m. You can tune in on WatchAppTV.com or on YouTube, Channel 198 for Spectrum customers, Channel 20 or 1020 for SkyBus customers, and Channel 23-3 on campus. Also be sure to check out our Instagram at Can't Think Straight App TV. We can't wait to see you there. Bye. Hi, I'm Kinsey Adams. And I'm Jalen Sturdivant. Connected Cultures is back for spring 2022. We'll be talking to you about Mexico, South Africa, the Netherlands, and much more. We've got great interviews with staff and students. Seth will show us how to make some delicious meals. We'll get you connected to the amazing cultures around the world. Tune in every Friday at 10 a.m. for new episodes of Connected Cultures. You can watch online at WatchAppTV.com or on campus on channel 23.3. Bye. Bye. Um, what's going on? Up late. Up late. What is that? Sketch show. Sketch show. Oh boy, when does it air? Sunday night. What time? 9 p.m. Thanks. Welcome back to the A Game. I'm your host, Noah C. Cornelius, alongside Chris Daniels. The wrestling team sent five of their wrestlers to Detroit to participate in the NCAA tournament. For the first time in three decades, the Mountaineers had three wrestlers move on to a round of 16 in the tournament, including Caleb Smith, who was a first year starter for the Mountaineers. Day two saw more history being made as Jonathan Milner became the 20th Mountaineer All-American and the second two-time NCAA All-American in program history. Milner was able to beat his finish from last year by placing sixth in the tournament. At the end of the weekend, App State was able to place 28th overall in the team standings. Some notable achievements this year were Thomas Flitz earning his 84th career win, Flitz also won his first SOCON title this season and made his third NCAA tournament appearance. Other notable achievements, including Caleb Smith going 24 and eight with his biggest win coming over Minnesota's All-American Patrick McKee. The team finished nine and two this year and was undefeated in the conference. Coach Bentley was also named SOCON coach of the year for the fifth time. The basketball season for App State has come to a close. Let's look at some of the top plays from this season. To the rim, Carver, the lead feed, and the bucket. And he's got to make his move. Forrest spins the step back. Oh, he got it to go! Justin Forrest, ice in his face. Forrest has had ice in his veins tonight. Inside in a rush, blocks it for the. Both the men's and women's teams finished with a winning record. This was the men's third straight winning season and the women's second. We will keep everyone updated on who could be staying and who could be leaving the program over the next couple weeks. With the NFL Draft coming up soon, let's take a look at a Mountaineer who is making waves in the combine scene. Linebacker DeMarco Jackson posted the 8th fastest 40-yard dash time for linebackers in this year's combine with a time of 4.55 seconds. Jackson also recorded a 33-inch vertical and a 10.5-inch board. Jackson also played in 53 games during his career at App State, posting 295 total tackles over four years of playing. He also had 11 sacks, three interceptions, and one fumble recovery during his tenure. In his last season in Boone, Jackson earned Sunbelt Defensive Player of the Year and First Team All-Sunbelt. 
Jackson captained the team in all 14 games last season and posted 119 tackles over the course of the season. The NFL Draft is scheduled to take place April 28th through the 30th. Good luck, DeMarco. After the break, we'll take a look at how the softball team did in their home opener, and our very own Eric Fisher will have an update regarding the App TV versus WASU Bracket Challenge. It's time for Sports Wrap on 90.5 WASU-FM. Unpredictable. NC State can be on a That is true. I feel like they do have one of these games uh, in this part of the season every year. I'm not going to get into a big discussion about expanding it. I definitely think it should be maybe capped at eight teams, maybe six. six, 228 yards on the ground as compared to a total of 55 for Coastal Carolina. I count one team of the six games that they have played this year that was in the playoffs last year. Welcome back to the A-Game. I'm Chris Daniels alongside Noisy Cornelius. The baseball team traveled down the mountain to Chapel Hill to take on the 13th ranked Tar Heels. The game was very close to the Mountaineers only trailing by one, heading into the eighth inning. Luke Drumheller was able to hit one out the park to tie the up game up before UNC recorded two runs in the bottom of the eighth to retake the lead. The team ultimately lost 4-2 after not getting any runs in the ninth inning. The team will be traveling to Hickory March 29th to play UNC Asheville in the Crawdad Stadium. The first pitch is set for 6 p.m. It's softball season in the high country. Let's take a look at some highlights from the softball home opener for the Mountaineers. App State pitcher Kaylee Northrup throws her third strike on Western Carolina player Brooklyn Brewington. Then, Northrop once again pitches just out of the strike zone, then catcher Bailey Morton throws it out during Wesley's attempt to steal second base. And the second baseman, Addie Ray, who has a total of 63 putouts this season, throws it out to first base, causing Western their third out of the inning. Western tries to slide into home, and Bailey Morton catches the ball and tags Western out. Then, there's the pitch, and it's a hit as Kate Houston makes it all the way to second base. And Claire Carson hits into the outfield and Houston runs into home and scores. Then it's Northrup once again throwing it out to first base as the team joins together to celebrate. And there goes another pitch and it's a hit. Houston runs and slides into second base. After that electrifying win, the Mountaineers split the weekend series against WCU. Their next game, March 30th at Chapel Hill. March Madness is in full swing, and with the first couple of rounds over, let's go to Eric Fisher to see who is winning the bracket challenge between App TV and WASU. A quick and sad update for the App TV versus WACU bracket challenge. With both brackets maxed out on points, App TV pulls out the shocking victory with 550 points to WACU's 540. A win is a win, I guess, for App TV. I'm proud that Steven and I won, but it wasn't a great win. And for this first ever bracket challenge between WACU and App TV, didn't look great. Hopefully next year when we bring it back, it'll be better. But so far, App TV 1-0 against WACU. Thanks for that, Eric. That's all the time we have for you this week. I'm Chris Daniels. And I'm Noah C. Cornelius. Make sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter at The A-Game Sports. And we will see you next week on The A-Game.